Good morning, Hope College. Happy Friday. Last Friday. Last chapel. Yeah. So good morning to you all. I'm so excited that you're here. I know that we've got some guests here in, at Hope that are looking at joining us as a community. We want to welcome you. I also want to give a particular shout out. There are some seniors here who graduate at semester, and this is their last chapel ever. We want to, we want to say thank you. We love you. We love you. We love you. So good to have you here. I also want to give one quick notice. Sunday, here in Dinmit, 8 o'clock, chapel is all dressed up, and we invite you to reflect that glory. Get all, get your groove on. If you've been waiting to ask someone out, Sunday's the night. You get your groups together, come on. And we're going to come inside here and we're going to sing to the Lord of Emmanuel, God with us. Because one of my favorite things, one of my favorite things. Hey, I lost you. I'm right here. I'm right here. I'm right here. One of my favorite things is that when we sing, don't you love to sing? Yeah, if you love to sing, come to your feet right now if you're able. It's our last chapel of 2021. We'll never get this group together again. Let's sing to the Lord this morning. Amen? Let's go. Let's go. Let's go.
Father, how good it is to praise you in this beautiful space. Um, Father, we just thank you for who you are and that during this Advent season, we get to anticipate the wonderful gift of your birth and then later your sacrifice. Um, Father, I just pray over each and every student on this campus as we prepare for exams next week. I pray that you remind us of the hard work that we've spent this semester and that we are capable of success. Um, Lord, just thank you for your love um, and that this season is a joyful reminder of that. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Peace of Christ be with you, Hope College. So good to see you. Thanks for being here. It's such a great joy to come together in this space and worship the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Well, you made it. Can you believe it? Hardly seems possible. Final day of classes. I love, love, I'm using the word love this time of year. Not just for the, uh, the, the lights and the ceremonies and um, the eggnog, but I love on a college campus this week because you're all off focused. I can see it in your eye. You've got the game face on. You're the books of, that you hadn't opened all semester are open. And you're like studying and you're cramming and you're getting after it. The internal intensity is evident and the pressure is mounting. It's, you got to finish that paper. You got to finish that project. You got to get ready for that final exam. I love it. It's my favorite. I see you all intense. I love it. But if I'm honest, I also can see not only the intensity but probably a little bit of fatigue. Anyone tired? Yeah. <laughs> hey, man, brother. Anyone just feel like there's some weariness in the bones a little bit? We got you there. Yeah, that feeling that creeps in this time of year because you've been running hard. It's like that last 100 yards of that mile race. But you got to keep going all the way to the finish line. I couldn't be more, I mean, part of the fatigue is there's just the schoolwork, the, all the activities that you're doing, but there's just also just stuff in the atmosphere. There's literally a virus, COVID, there is school shootings, there is natural disasters, there's just all of these things. It seems like the news cycle every single day just brings a new kind of anxiety. And that gets into the body, it gets into the soul. And so if you're feeling tired right now, it's legitimate. I just want to say that. But what's the antidote to that fatigue, to that weariness, to that anxiety? Well, a couple diagnostics. Um, my mother would ask me, Trig, are you, are you sleeping? Do you sleep? Y'all need to sleep. Are you drinking water? You just get... Get some nourishment inside of you. Eat good food. Not like just food, but like good food, like vegetables. Things that have like, you know, vitamins. and Like some of those diagnostic things, you can do that. Surprisingly will help alleviate some of your anxiety. But the kind of anxiety I think that a lot of us maybe shadow box is the kind of anxiety, fatigue, weariness that doesn't just come from getting a good night's sleep. Because it's in the soul. And what's the antidote to that? The antidote to that, for me, and for the people of God for millennia, has been to go to the Bible and to eat Scripture. Because when we go to the Bible and we get Scripture inside of us, it tells us something fundamental. It reframes our anxiety by giving us a vision of God that gives us hope that tells us that this circumstance that we are in, that we are navigating, isn't the final circumstance. That God will act decisively to do something new for you, for us, for this world. Which is what we've been exploring in chapel during this Advent season. And if you're somebody who feels that pressure mounting over a paper or a project, or your soul is sick from the weariness of just the grief of the world, Hear these words from the book that we love, the bush that burns and is never consumed. Hear these words from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 9, verses 2 through 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. 
Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them the light has shined. You have multiplied the nations. You have increased their joy. They will rejoice with you as with joy at the harvest. As people exalt when dividing plunder. For the yoke of your burden and the bar across their shoulders. You have broken on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the trampling warriors and all the garments soaked in blood shall be as fuel for the fire. For a child is born for us, a son is given to us, authority shall rest on his shoulders, and his name is Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. His authority will continually grow, and there will be an endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish it with justice and righteousness from this time on and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Words penned by the prophet Isaiah 700 years before the birth of Christ. Christians have long looked at these words as a prophetic foreshadow of what God was going to do in the world. A world where garments are soaked in blood. A world where the boots of the trampoline soldiers will be thrown into the fire for the fuel. A world full of anxiety and death and destruction. In that kind of world, the prophet Isaiah gives us a picture of hope. And the prophet is so critical to our story because the prophet is that one who calls us back to God. Because our current circumstances can get our attention off of something that is so fundamental that we forget who we are. We start chasing other idols, other things that desire our worship and our attention. And the prophet is always saying, don't focus on those things. I need you to focus on God. The prophet is always, always calling us back to be intoxicated with the wonder and love of God. And that's what Isaiah offers us here. We see a picture of who God is. For a child will be born for us. A son given to us. Authority will rest on his shoulders. And his name will be Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. See, that's the antidote to the weariness to the fatigue. It's a clarion, clear picture of the living God. 700 years before Jesus, Isaiah writes these words, and then God does something decisive in human history that continues to overwhelm the world in hope. A child has been given to us. A son has been born for us, and authority still rests on his shoulders. And he's wonderful counselor, as we've heard. He's mighty God, as Matt told us. He's the everlasting father, as Jill mentioned to us. But today, if you're feeling weary and anxiety and fatigue, I want you to know that he is the prince of peace. The prince of peace. That's who Jesus is. He's the prince. A prince is a son. It's an heir to the throne. It embodies a legacy, an inheritance. To be a prince means that there is a certain level of expectation and responsibility laid at your feet. Jesus, the son given to us, the child born for us, is a prince. I remember when I was a boy, probably about 11 or 12 years old, I was downtown in my place called Oak Harbor, and I was with a crew of friends. And we were just messing about, and we went inside this local sports store called Chuck Dan's. And we were like just making a ruckus and being obnoxious and probably pestering some of the customers. We were just, we were just young and messing around. And I remember the owner, Mr. Erickson, came out and confronted us. And I was getting ready for him to yell at us because, you know, we were, yeah, we weren't being good. And he looked at me, he singled me out. And he said, aren't you Dave Johnson's son? I said, yeah, Uh uh-huh. He said, your father's a good man. 
And then he turned and walked away. And I knew in that moment, one, I should stop messing around. Two, I also felt what it was like to be part of a community. And sometimes like a, I thought to myself, this community might be too small. <laughs> but at the same time, I also felt this overwhelming sense of pride. This man knew my father was a good man. He knew I was his son. And I felt like a prince. And I knew that I had to represent that goodness. Jesus is the prince. And he's not just the prince of a throne, but he's the prince of peace. Peace. See, peace, my friends, is what you were made for. At the gathering, we've been telling this big story of God, and the whole story begins in God's outrageous creation of love, of his free will, and he creates everything in peace. The peace that the Bible talks about is not the peace that the world talks about. When we talk about peace, we mean kind of a ceasefire between enemies or uh, a pause on violence. But the peace that the Bible talks about is much deeper. It's much more personal. In, in Hebrew, the word is shalom. You know this word? And the word shalom means a, a reconciliation with God and with ourselves and with our neighbor and with creation. It's everything knit together in justice and fulfillment and delight. Jesus is the prince of peace. And this peace is what God wants to give us. This peace is what we are originally created in. And that is still God's desire for you. When you feel weary and you feel overwhelmed... We go to the Bible and we get a clear picture of who God is. God is the prince of peace. And his authority will continually grow. And there will be an endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish it with justice and righteousness. And it will be now and forevermore. And the zeal of the Lord of hosts, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. And here's the good news. As you head into finals, as you finish your final projects and put the final period at the end of that final paper, as you prepare and back your bags to go home, and, and I know that for some of you that's exciting, for other, some of you that also creates some anxiety. I want you to know that God is with you. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this, but the good news is the zeal of the Lord of hosts has already done this. For a child has already been born for us. A son has already been given to us. And the authority of all of God is still on his shoulders. And he's saying to you and to me that I am for you and I give you my peace. It's not accidental that after the resurrection, the first thing, the first thing, the first thing that Jesus says to his disciples is peace be with you. And he's directly quoting this from Isaiah that my reign will be an endless peace, now and forever. So no matter what circumstances you're facing, no matter what feelings you're navigating in your soul, know right now, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that the living God is giving you his peace. Because the good news is the inheritance of that son of peace has shared that inheritance with us. To all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. We share the same inheritance that Jesus has with the Father through faith in him. He shares it with us. The good news is that we have his inheritance now and forever. So as you take that final, uh, final, write that final paper, as you head home, as I stumble along words, it's okay. Because the peace of God is with us because the Prince of Peace has given it to us. Amen? Amen. Friends, I love you. Go into this. Go into this final weekend. I hope to see you Sunday. I hope to sing the doxology with you. Get all dressed up. Get ready to go. And go in peace now to love and serve the Lord.